everybody. Uh, first off, thanks for everybody coming today, taking the time off to to be with us and, and, and talk a little bit about the Ag Rider and uh, what we're going to be going through. Um, with that, um, I'm actually going to hand this over uh, after I introduce myself. Um, I'm Steve Hoffman, uh, Business Development Manager here in Cerro. And we've also got Greg Guyette, um, Founder, General Manager, um, Guru, General Ag Rider Guru on line as well. And uh, he's going to be doing a little walkthrough here, uh, kind of talking about what we're going to be going through. Um, uh, we're going to be, he's going to be hitting on the, some of these uh, um, points I've got up right now. And uh, with that, Greg, go ahead. Sure. Thanks, Steve. Hey, Greg Guyette here. And, and what I'm hoping to do today, this is, a, you know, one of our first webinars that we're going to start scheduling. We're going to start making these regular events. So um, we're going to be shooting for one to two a month. Um, talking about uh, different things, generally talk about ag otter. We'll have some some uh, some presentations that are more focused on ag hippo, which you'll hear us talk about quite a bit, which is our real time tracking and data management uh, software that'll really expand its capabilities this year. So we'll talk uh, a bit about that today, um, but we will have other sessions that are more focused on that. So um, I encourage you guys if uh, if you you know, if you want to relay the word about this or come to other sessions, certainly do so and, and look uh, look to our website um, for scheduling. Um, so today we're just going to go through a brief history, uh, not talk too much about that, but just kind of give you you guys an idea of what our, yeah. all our background was. Um, and we'll get into talking about the Ag Otter uh, hardware uh, and we'll, we'll get into um, the components, which is really the controller, the meter, and the valve and talk about what, how they work and, and uh, give you guys some detail on that. Um, then we'll get into the app. Steve's gonna go through the app and, and uh, do a walkthrough and give you guys a good feeling for that. I encourage you guys, speak up, speak out. That's probably where some of you guys uh, that have run the system have some questions or have some feedback. Um, that's another thing we're looking to get out of that is not just questions from you guys, but feedback. You know, if you guys are users of the system, um, bring that, uh, bring anything to our attention, things you want to see. Uh, this really helps us uh, plan our year. And, you know, we've got a, a, a pretty comprehensive list of to-dos, of, of priorities. And um, one thing that we base our priorities on is customer feedback. So certainly um, speak out, speak up, uh, talk to us about what you guys would like to see. Um, then we'll get into Ag Hippo and talking about uh, the real-time component of it. And then we'll talk about some of our software partners and some of the things that we've uh, got coming out in, in uh, 2021. Um, some things that we're doing with Conservice, uh, further pushing our Agrian uh, relationship along and talk to some of the things that we're doing with Ag Hippo for, uh, for data push pull coming back and forth with work orders and, and jobs and things like that. And then we'll talk a little bit about what we are, uh, what we're planning to do. Um, again, this is where I encourage you guys to give us some feedback. We'll talk about what our current priority list is, but we're, we're certainly um, want to hear from you guys what you guys think we should be doing. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, just let's go to the next slide. Um, and, you know, first and foremost, you guys should know, you know, we're an ag engineering company uh, and Cerro was was founded in 2014 and really all of us have a, a have a pretty extensive background in other ag companies it's I think that's pretty much what all, uh, all our employees have done for, uh, you know in our in our life is has been involved with agricultural companies you know my background for for 19 years I ran um, the aircraft division at Satlock, which became other companies, Hemisphere GPS, CSI, um, lots of different names over the years, um, lots of, uh, of uh, mergers with different companies. And um, that's where uh, I really cut my teeth was crop dusting aircraft and, and, uh, and designing systems, everything from the software to the hardware. Um, but it was clear to me as we... Uh, as we went along, and I think it was clear to others, that we need to jump on some of the newer technology, the, the apps that are out there, the wireless technologies. And to us, we just didn't see 
many companies getting on board with that. And, and still to this day, we don't see it. So other companies run apps and they use apps, but they don't, uh, they're not like us that are, they're completely ag centric, that are app centric, where we just uh, drive the entire system over apps um, and, and really through tablet PCs. In our case, we use a, an Apple product and we'll talk a bit more about that. So um, we've really focused on that side of things. Um, from the engineering side, handling everything internally at Encero, you know, we're the makers of Ag Otter, we're the makers of Ag Pilot X, we're the makers of Ag Hippo. So we do it all. We do the, the uh, programming for the web-based work. We do the programming for uh, the, the, uh, uh, the apps. We design those all ourselves. And we do all the firmware, which is the machine code that's on the hardware. We do, we do everything. Uh, just step to the next uh, next uh, slide, talking here a little bit about our history. So um, we were founded in 2014 and 2016 is really where we brought Ag Otter into the field. That's when we started selling the unit and, and started promoting it. Um, largely, we started in California. Uh, now, our, our big push in California, the reason why we went after what we did is because we saw a real a real hole, not just in technology, but we saw a hole in, in um, something that was designed around trees, vines, orchards. Um, it, it seemed to us that there was really no good product that served that specific market. Um, in, in general, an app-based uh, uh, product was not really in the field, but there were other, other products that were really uh, serving other markets like the row crop and things like that. But in California, we couldn't see anything that was really uh, uh, valuable to customers. So the technology side of it, that's why we went after that first. And that's really was, uh, was really the, the start of our, our company and our technology push was to start, uh, build a product for California, build it around trees, um, build, build it around uh, where we saw a real a hole in the marketplace. And that's what we did. And we spread up into the Pacific Northwest. Of course, we spread over into Australia. Uh, we, we've got a few units down in South America. And we spread out uh, throughout the U.S. and into Canada as well. Um, and, you know, just that the main uh, uh, piece of that product was really about an app-based wireless system uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that wireless technology and the components, but that's where we got started in 2016. 2017, we really started to promote our uh, Agrian partnership. Um, that's really where we started with, we started with Bluetooth. We moved to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in 2017 and really uh, started using Agrian as a close relationship of ours. Um, and ever since, that's been a great relationship in, in the immediate future. We'll see those. Uh, see that relationship grow and, and start to leverage some of the the uh, uh, some of the things that we're doing uh, from Agri and with their all their uh, uh, work order creation and their chemical label database, their product uh, database. Uh, we'll start leveraging some of that more as we go. Uh, 2018, we introduced the real time tracking component, which is Ag Hippo, which you'll hear us talk more about. Um, that really uh, allows us not only to see what's going on in real time, to see any number of assets, but that's really uh, what we're using as a springboard for work order management. So we can start uh, pushing work orders to uh, the Ag Otter and getting data back from the Ag Otter. So all the as applied maps uh, come up to the cloud. Um, it's optional, of course, it's not, not necessary as the product runs. Um, the product can certainly run standalone, doesn't need to do that. But of course, it's a feature that you can add. It's all driven through the Apple product. We'll talk a little bit more about this. But you just log into your Apple product. And it's as simple as that. That's one thing that you'll hear, one theme that you'll hear us talk about quite a bit today is leveraging things from Apple um, to make a better experience for the customer because that's one advantage we have over our com competition is that because we drive everything through an Apple product, it makes it very simple, for instance, to connect to the cloud. 
um, how we get data from our Ag Otter and push it up to the cloud. It's just a matter of logging in. So once you log in, you don't have to log in again. All your data, and, and this applies to any of our systems that are already in the field and all systems going forward, as long as you've got an Apple product that's connected, that's our modem. That's our conduit to the cloud. That's what makes it very simple. You log in once, now your data is being pushed to the cloud. If you don't want it um, to be pushed to the cloud, you just log out. And it's just that simple to get the data back and forth. Um, again, we'll talk, we'll talk more about that as we go. Um, 2019, uh, just over a year ago, um, we felt the need to really bring more people in in California that seemed to be um, one of our bottlenecks was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in Arizona and it was pretty tough uh, to support that market being so far away when we needed to get to something quickly, we couldn't do that. Um, we do have somebody in the Pacific Northwest, Dave Nurple. Um, so we've got a couple people in Texas, but we didn't have anything in California. So we, we brought, uh, of course, Steve on board who has a, has a heavy Agrian background. Um, you know, Steve uh, was with Agrian for, uh, Steve, what was, how many years were you with uh, Agrian in California out of Fresno? Six years. Six years. So uh, that's years at where, CPS prior to that. Right, right, CPS. And I've known Steve for a lot of years now. And um, being that we have a really tight relationship with Agrian, um, it was something that uh, we did ask permission to, to take uh, to steal Steve away. It wasn't a, a poaching deal, but we, we did get Steve on board and that was huge for us to give us that support in California. Recently, we brought Bill Taylor on. Bill came from Kisco. I uh, worked for Simplot. He's worked with the Raven products for many years and he gives us that experience with sprayers because that's one thing we want to be known for is not only helping customers um, with Ag Otter, with our product, um, because early on it became very evident that just helping, you know, if we can have an Ag Otter system in place and it can be running perfectly well, but if the sprayer's got major issues or the sprayer's got issues and we can't properly identify those issues, it becomes a real problem. So that's what uh, Bill Taylor's done for us. He's brought that sprayer experience on and He's, a, he's an asset for all our customers because now he can go out to the field, look at the sprayer, find out issues, um, and, and support the sprayer because we've, you know, we've decided that if we can't support the sprayer, uh, even away from the, uh, the Ag Otter product, then we're just never going to make this work effectively. So Bill brings us a real experience, and uh, um, you know, we encourage you guys uh, Bill is, you know, you guys have access to Bill, not just for the Ag Otter, but for your sprayers. Um, certainly, we want to be a partner with you guys, and and Bill is uh, is certainly available for our customer base to work with your sprayers and your Ag Otters just to be sure everything's running running well. Um, and then 2020, just this past year, you see a picture of our new controller. That's uh, um, that's something that we've changed this past year. Um, the biggest issue that we saw with units in the field was really um, not so much waterproofing. We, we do have all our units are waterproof, um, but if they get hit with a, with a pressure washer, for instance, they don't hold up to pressure washers um, and they don't hold up to extreme water environments, which, we, which, they're, uh, which they face. pressure washer proof that uh, can stand up to, to anything that we can put up against it in the in the field and uh, that's what we did so um, that's our our new enclosure it's just uh, it's like a little tank and it's uh, built to be incredibly robust and, and uh, that's what we'll be using going forward some other things that you'll hear us talk about a little bit more um, we moved to Bluetooth 5.0. We'll talk about why that's relevant and really what that means, what Bluetooth 5.0 is. That's the new Bluetooth that everybody comes out with Apple is now using. Um, they really introduced it in all their products in 2019. So if you've got a products from us, which include an iPad uh, since late 2019, then you've got Bluetooth 5.0. We'll talk, we'll talk more to that, that point, why it's relevant. Um, 
and serial data port. And what, what that means is just the ability to take in uh, data. Uh, what we now work with, we now work with harvesters. So we can plug in to, uh, to systems that are set up with, uh, with weight controls and we can pull in harvest data. What that helps us do is build the heat maps um, through our Ag Hippo site. So you can see exactly what uh, yield was taken in in almonds and, and walnuts. Um, we've been running that for two years now in Australia, um, which we're, I guess we're coming up on our second season. They're just about to start harvest in Australia here in February. And we've run it one season in, uh, in the US and this will be our second season in the US. And that helps us working with that Australian market, of course, helps us in the off season here, we're able to do some things there. And then the off season there, we're able to do some things here. So it helps us um, get those two uh, two working points for harvest because we only get get it once a year. So um, effectively gives us two chances to run through harvest and, and learn more about it. So if you guys have questions about that or want to know more about it, certainly feel free to uh, to engage us on that. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit um, toward the end of this uh, presentation. We'll talk more about what we're planning to do for 2021 and, and uh, 2022 and forward. Um, so going back to, to Ag Otter and just uh, what it is, um, you know, basically you're just talking about spread compensated rate control. So um, what we what we saw as a whole in the marketplace, um, really specifically to tree canopies, was uh, was an opportunity because nobody else was really in in this field for heavy tree canopies because uh, they offer a unique problem. Um, in what we do for sprayers and trees, they're, they're unique in a couple of ways. One is they have a heavy, heavy canopy of, of uh, tree growth or branches that block out GPS. So that's your, your first issue that uh, no other systems really work well because of that. And uh, you know, that's one thing that we, we had lots of experience was, with was taking um, augmenting GPS through inertial sensors and, uh, and on, on board uh, uh, gyro and accelerometer and using the speed sensor as well to augment the GPS. So if we lose GPS going into a heavy canopy, we continue uh, to operate, we continue to map, we continue to rate control, we don't need GPS. And so going through a heavy canopy of trees you never lose uh, your ability to control rate and you never lose your, abil your ability to keep mapping everything. So you see a pretty picture at the end of the day. And that's uh, where others um, really didn't, didn't have the capability to, to put that together. And another unique thing about uh, going through trees, of course, is slow speeds. Um, going at slow speeds really causes uh, problems with GPS. The slower you go, GPS doesn't like that. If you've ever used a uh, walking GPS system and walked around, if you go real slow, the GPS starts getting confused. It just, uh, there's too much noise when you start going, when you're only going two miles an hour or two and a half miles an hour. And so what that you know, showed us is that we have a real opportunity to use a ground speed sensor and that's what a ground speed sensor does really well. It works really well at slow speeds. It's very accurate. And of course, uh, so that gave us the, the, the speed that we needed at a real uh, uh, a slow rate. So we didn't have to worry about GPS. We can use that speed sensor. That'll give us a, a very accurate rate. And the inertial system gives us the side to side movement. So the speed tells us how, how, much, how far forward we're moving. And the inertial system gives us a side to side movement. So, you know, in, a, in perfect conditions, we just use GPS for all that. You know, the GPS we have, it's actually a GNSS system. We use Galileo and GPS. We have plenty of satellites. So in no canopy, that works perfectly well. It's about a foot and a half accuracy. And that's, uh, that's um, you know, absolute accuracy. So going out today and coming back tomorrow, you're going to be within a foot and a half of, of where you started. That's the, our GPS accuracy. Um, but when you get under trees and you get around obstacles and you start confusing GPS, that's where our inertial system and our ground speed sensor take over. They just say, okay, GPS isn't good enough. 
so I don't need it. I'm going to revert to the, the uh, speed sensor, which in, in essence is really how we do rate control anyway, because a, a speed sensor is much more accurate in doing something like that than GPS is. So we use GPS really for the mapping because it creates a pretty picture. We use the speed sensor for the rate control because it makes it very accurate. And of course the inertial system just fine tunes um, the movement of the, of the, of the, uh, of, the GP, of the latitude and longitude so we can just make a more, uh, uh, more accurate picture at the end of the day. So when you're looking at the map, you've got a very, very uh, accurate map. Um, and that's one thing that we're, you know, one, one mantra that we have at Incero is, is making few to no operator requirements. You know, our goal, and you'll hear us talk about that, is to remove the human, is to remove the need for a human to be there or any button pushes, because that's what we want to get at. We want full data movement of uh, being able to send a, a system instructions. And we'll talk about how we can do that with Ag Hippo, where we send the jobs or the work orders, we send the instructions for the, uh, for the controller. Then once it knows what to do, it can control the rate, read the rate, do everything it needs to do um, uh, to work on its own. And at the end of the day, it can send back those as applied maps without anybody having to tell it, hey, I need the, the log or the information to be as applied. It just does it automatically. So that's what we're, we're working toward with our, with our product. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the, the last on there, the last item on there is just uh, diversity. So using our controller, you know, we've, as we move to a, a harvest-based system, for instance, in Australia, we've got uh, our users that spray with it um, during spray season, and they take it off and they put it on their harvesters and they use it to um, record the harvest data that's come across and build a heat map. So um, certainly that's our product has the diversity to, to um, be used in, in multiple areas. We also have people use it for weed sprayers. And, you know, let's, you know, just to make sure everybody understands that our system is a rate control system for anything, for any liquid spray. So weed sprayer, anything that sprays liquid, we have the capability uh, to read it and control it. And, and, uh, and so it's not just for, this specific market. It's, this is just one market that we really saw uh, had a need for something like Ag Otter, but it can be used across in other markets as well. Um, and talking a little bit more to the points of the components, um, we'll lay out the components and just talk about what each one does. Um, but the first piece of this is really the wireless component. So what we do to communicate with the controller is we just use Bluetooth um, to talk back and forth from the, from the uh, uh, iPad or iPhone to the, the, uh, the controller. Of course, we can use any Apple product. You know, it's not just the products that we supply. We supply these things with Apple uh, iPad minis. We supply, uh, supply them with iPads and in the air. We use iPad Pros. And of course, you can use your phone. You can take your phone out of your pocket. That's one of course, unique uh, thing about our, our system and controller is that you can take the phone out of your pocket, set it, and we have a lot of customers that just uh, set the rate on the controller and stick the phone in their pocket and walk away. And of course, you can do that. Um, the, uh, the iPad is not required for the system to run. It is required if you're going to do real time because that's the modem. So if you want to watch everything in real time, you do have to have an Apple product an iPad, an iPhone, anything that relays the data in real time. But if you just want to set the rate um, so the system controls it, say, you know, 100 gallons per acre, you can just set it, of course, with the iPad, stick the iPad in your pocket, walk away, and that controller is, is going to um, control that rate forever until it's told to do something else. The iPad is really... Um, you know, not necessary for the controller to run it. Just, uh, just, just use that to change the settings that are on the controller already. Um, so, talking about the other components, really, that uh, the the controller itself, of course, is the brains. It has the uh, GPS on board. It has the inertial system inside it. Uh, it's got the data logger inside it. Everything's recorded there. 
And then you just have a meter and you have a valve. In some cases, we run two meters. We'll talk about that. But uh, um, a meter is to read the information coming off the, the coming through the, the flow, and the valve is to control it. So we just read a meter, and then based on that input on what's happening through that meter, we control the valve. So if we're reading that meter and we need to open in the valve a little bit more to get more flow out, we open it. If we need to close it to get less flow out, then we just do that um, in standard operating systems. Um, and a lot of systems that we use two meters so we can look at left versus right. And why we do that, of course, is because we see tremendous variation from side to side in tree sprayers. Um, one thing that was very evident to us is um, that this is an opportunity really to look at uh, the left and the right and let uh, the user know when they have plug nozzles or it will really tell you of any any kind of problem that you have with your with your uh, uh, the, the plumbing of the of uh, the, the sprayer but what it effectively does is if we can read that side to side you can see a couple percentage difference when you get a plug nozzle so if I'm spraying 100 gallons an acre and I see, okay, my left is spraying 90 gallons an acre, but my right is spraying 110 gallons an acre. It's just uh, 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 clear that something's wrong with that left side. There's some blockage. Typically, it's a plug nozzle. Not every time. There are other issues as well, but you know, probably 95% of the time or, or more, you know, you got a plug nozzle on that side. Um, so it's nice to be able to see that, look at it, and say, okay, I've got an issue. I've got to address that. We use electromagnetic meters, and, and what that means is we just use meters with no moving parts. Anybody that's run rate control systems uh, with uh, uh, meters that have turbines on them or paddle wheels, the problem with those, of course, they get dinged up, they get blocked up, they get things get stuck in them, and they stop working. And they become very frustrating. We've been involved in, in rate control here in a former life since 1997, designing rate control systems. And that was always the weak link of the system was running turbines or paddle wheels. And so moving to an electromagnetic meter that has no moving parts has really been a luxury. So uh, we can work with turbine meters. We work with existing systems. We put our controllers on uh, uh, Raven components and we read um, Raven meters, no problem. Um, that's something we can do. Of course, we prefer not to, and we try to twist uh, everybody's arms and say, hey, uh, the electromagnetic uh, meter is just a better way to read, read flow going through a, going through a system. Um, so that pretty much um, covers the components. Of course, there's a GPS antenna and a ground speed sensor. The ground speed sensor is just to give us that, uh, that speed. And the GPS antenna is just to feed the GPS board, which is inside the controller. Um, and I'll just take a pause and just ask if there's any questions just on the components themselves. If anybody um, has any concerns or questions uh, about the components specifically and, and how the system works. And, and I have just one on the... Um, um... With the use of the inertial, are you still able to um, map as you go or paint the field as you go? Yes, yeah, that's that's one of the major points of that inertial system because um, what we do and how we're able to do that. Once once we get a, a, a latitude and longitude uh, from GPS, um, GNSS, using both GPS and GLONASS, when you're outside the canopy, once I have a GPS position, now I can extrapolate positions going forward. So this is what allows us to map. You know, if I now with the speed sensor, again, I get the forward motion from the speed sensor. So I know how far forward I'm moving. And then the inertial system gives us the side to side motion. So it tells us how far we're drifting from side to side. So what that does, it allows us to extrapolate latitudes and longitudes, right? And that's what we need to map. That's what you need to paint the picture. That's what you need for a pretty map at the end of the day is you got to have the latitudes and longitudes. So if we don't have GPS, we still get those positions, those latitudes and longitudes from that speed sensor in, those inert, in that inertial system because we know exactly how far forward we're moving. We know exactly how far side to side we're moving. 
so we can make sure, okay, we've got a, a latitude and longitude, put that on the map, show you where you are, record that. So at the end of the day, you know precisely where you were. So it starts with the GPS system. I get a position, but then once I have that position, I can lose it and then let the, let the, uh, the, the speed sensor and the inertial system take over for that position. So they're just saying, hey, uh, you know, I, I don't have to rely on GPS now that I've got a position. I can extrapolate these positions to make sure I've got a pretty map at the end of the day. So that's, that's, that's really the, the crux of, of uh, what sets our system apart. And, you know, you see on this slide, that's a patent that we put together. Um, so that's a patent that Encero owns is using that ground speed sensor and inertial system to continue mapping, to continue mapping, to continue rate control, to, to continue having a fully operational system that's recording every position that you're in and doing that with or without GPS. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's an important um, piece of technology that we've got on our side um, for, for our product. So it's a, you know, we do get questions where people say, is it like an RTK system or a, or, or, a, a kinematic system or, a, or something that uh, uh, can run off um, RTK? And, and yes, it is similar to that, right? It's, uh, it's just the ability to not rely on GPS for ongoing positions. Um, any other questions or, or comments or feedback on, on the product itself? We'll get more into, into uh, talking about those products and how we're working with uh, the cloud and how we're pushing data to the cloud through Ag Hippo. But uh, now I'll turn it back to Steve. Steve's going to talk about um, the app itself. He'll talk about you know the iPad and what we're doing with the app and how it works with uh, with the controller. He's going to walk through the app so you guys get a feeling for you know our our menu system. I encourage you guys to ask questions, uh, give us feedback. We do have some online videos that also uh, walk through this. And, and also, I believe, Steve, this is being recorded as well, right? So if we want, yes, it is. if anybody wants to see that or pass that on or, or, uh, or, or pass it on to others, um, you can do that. But Steve, I'll turn it back to you to, to walk through the app. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to switch it over to the iPad here. Um, you know, and I got some of the reasons there why we use them. I mean, ease of use, uh, it gives us a great way to update the app via the app store. It's all, you know, automatic. Those are some of the things. Main reason too is the cell modem, right? That's a great way for us to be able to move that data live for you to see. And we'll, we'll talk about that next in, in, in Ag Hippo in, in that live look. And, um, you know, and it, with, with in a technology like Apple as well, that's something that's going to be around long term. It's, it's not just period tomorrow. It's a, they've done a pretty good job with computers and, and they're a pretty good company. So um, at that, you know, let's jump into it real quick. Um, let me uh, exit this. And just uh, sure. for everybody's knowledge, just so you know, that app is available at the app store. Anybody can download it. It's a free app. You can put it on your phone. You can, uh, you know, so if you want to walk through the simulator, you can do that yourself. It's available to anybody and everybody on any any Apple platform. So on your phone, on your on your iPad, feel free to download it. Um, and of course, it's fully functional. All right. Um, so what we're looking at here is the iPad. Um, if there was an actual iRouter connected at this point, you would be able to see a uh, see it on this list. But I'm not connected to an actual iRouter at this point, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my simulate device. And what we're seeing here is this is the uh, display that a driver or applicator will see as they are uh, going through the field. Um, so you can see here at the top, we've got um, you know their miles per hour, how fast they're actually running. Uh, right below that and to the, and <clears throat> to the left is how many acres that that um, driver is covered. Uh, we can see that there quickly. And then to the right of that, on the far left, far right there, is how many gallons are left in the tank. Uh, that lets them monitor, uh, you know, proximity of, of how many gallons they've got left. Let them know, hey, if I've only got 40 gallons left and it's costing me 60 gallons to go down this row, 
um, maybe I should think about stopping now, go reload and, uh, and move on and, and, and start again instead of stopping midway and, and having to deal with that. Um, and once they do reload, it's just a matter of clicking that little tank and uh, that fills it back up and, and you're back, you're back to uh, work with the full tank. Um, you'll see on the bottom, and we've talked about this a couple of times, this unit is actually set up right now for orchard spray. Uh, it's got a left and right meter on the bottom. And uh, you can see here, you know, what, what it's putting out on each side. Uh, it's, it's able to show you, look, here's, I'm doing a 96.8 on one side, 101 on the other, um, whatever that is. Uh, and those uh, are set up with alarms as well that we'll look at next that can actually alert the driver to if there's any extremity, extremity, extremities between the two and, 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 and let them know, you know, is there a plug? Do I have issues? And uh, it'll, it'll, uh, it's a nice alert to just pay attention to. But in the middle, of course, is my combined uh, average. Um, so with that, the next page uh, is actually the setup page. And this is where, you're, you know, beginning of the day, your drivers are getting in, uh, you're getting to work, and they're going to start getting set up. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice on the top is control mode. Uh, that's, if you turn that off, at that point now, uh, that that valve is no longer controlling the uh, flow and compensating for speed. So you're back to you know pressure speed uh, and time, and, and it's just a matter of, of monitoring that. So the the meters will still be picking up what's going through uh, and and sending data, collecting data, but it's not going to be controlled. You know, so we always ask you know probably want to leave that on. Um, that, that, that's the whole idea and crux behind. Running the ag auto right is to have control. Um, <clears throat> resetting your target rate, quick, simple. I can jump in 125. I want to switch my row width. I can do that. Hit back, and uh, I'm back to spraying again. And you'll actually see on this screen it it's kind of narrowed up that gap. It, I didn't narrow it a bunch, but it's actually narrowed that uh, that swath on there. And now I'm also seeing my uh my alerts because I changed that rate. Um so if I change this back, it's gonna set that up. Now the tank volume, that's of course based on your sprayer. So you know, if you've got a thousand gallon tank, you're gonna put a thousand gallons, um, whatever that tank is in there. Uh the next step would be alarms. This is probably something that in as a you know, a supervisor or man managerial position, you're going to decide what I want you what you want to see these alerts at. Um, Ten percent is about probably what most people run. Um, you know, you can set that to whatever you want. I want a minimum. I don't want them to go below 90 gallons or 100 over 110. In this case, at a, at a 100 gallon per acre rate, you can tweak that to whatever percentage you want. In fact, I'm going to bring this down to an extreme amount for this demo. Just to show you the alerts, and then the same thing with speed. You can set. I don't want you going any higher than this speed or any lower than this, and that's going to send an alert to the driver as well. So now, if I go back, you can see getting those alerts on the bottom. Uh, you know, because I'm within that one one percent, and that's telling the driver, hey, something's wrong back there. We don't know what. We just know something's not right. Is that you're with you're you're outside the parameters that your uh, supervisor is giving you for that spray. So that'll be a good time to stop, go check the boom, maybe check your filters. Um, you know, all the fundamentals still still persist through this, and, and those are things that you have to watch for. Um, and of course, if they speed up, they're going to get an alert as well. And there we go. So they start going over that speed that has been set. They're going to know about it. They're going to be aware of what's happening. It's, it's, it's going to let them know what's going on. Um, and not only that now, they're also going to be able to see where they've been. So if they skip a row, they're going to be able to see that. They're going to know that, hey, I need to come back to that 
row and rerun that row. Um, or um, <clears throat> if they need to, if they don't pay attention to their downs per uh, tank load there and uh, get halfway through a row and need to come back and uh, start over again, this is going to mark where they left. So when they come back down that road, they're going to see exactly where they left off, be able to turn that boom back on and, and just start like they never even uh, left that row. Um, so any questions on the setup page or, or, or anything that we've already gone through? Um, I, I don't, I, I don't want to rush too fast, but I also don't want to hold you guys up. All right. Yeah, I, you just, uh, I, I think you're going to go through job notes, but I was just. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just saying that. It was a large back. So <clears throat> we also have job notes. Now, these are connected to every job, um, to, to this particular job. Um, they'll stay in as a note until the new log is restarted. Um, and what you can, you can put information in here, you know, according to what products I'm running. Uh, Who's driving this field? Who's which field am I in? The recommendation work order, and then other. Uh, a lot of guys like to use this, especially with uh, Gap, uh, is they're able to to drop you know some of that information in. So some of the things they want to know is who drove that field, what unit is this, and we're automatically saving the unit number because we we know that based on the ag order where that ag order is connected to, and then you know the job work order rec, all that. Now, in the future, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit, we, we, we talk about it all the time, and Greg spoke to it, is getting rid of that um, human involvement of inputting this information. Um, we're going to be working with our software partners to just have that information flow in from work orders and also from Ag Hippo Live at some point. And uh, we'll talk about the other stuff about that here at the end, but I, I wanted to point that out. This is one of those spots where we'll be able to fill that in with information that's sent from whatever uh, you know desktop component to fill that in for you. So that that's not something you have to worry about your drivers leaving everything as unknown or or as used to happen to me when I was running a, the sprayers. Is everybody put Roundup? Every job we did was Roundup because no one changed it. Um. Okay. Next page is actually uh, advanced. So in here, this is something that is probably most of the time is going to be a one and done page. Um, this is when you're first getting your system set up. You'll notice we've got the um, two meter set up because this is a setup right now for an orchard. Uh, I've got my meter cows there, and that's found actually on the meter. You can look right here. And it's got uh, you know your your uh, PPG written right on it, and that just needs to match up. Once you've got that in, um, that's pretty much done. You don't need to mess with that again, um, and it, it's going to be set. Uh, speed measurement that's based on the wheel sensor. So if you're running a wheel sensor, which a lot of times in the open field we don't do that, you can just shut that off and 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 run completely on GPS, or if you're having a wheel sensor issue, maybe a, a branch or something rip a wire out or, or something happened, you can just shut that off and continue to run with GPS until we can get that <clears throat> repaired and, and back in line. Um, you are gonna need to measure the tire circumference, uh, put that in. Again, that's something that's probably not gonna be changed unless uh, you change tires or tire sizes. Um, and then wheel bolts, um, that's just how many how many lug nuts are you basically running there. Um, <clears throat> now there is one thing here on this page that you may come back to more often than not, and that's the aggressiveness. Um, usually once it's set, it's, it's done, but you may find that uh, what, what the aggressiveness is doing is that's telling us how fast that valve needs to move to catch uh, and compensate for the speed as you're going through the field. Um, the higher the aggressiveness, the faster that valve moves. The, slow, the lower it is, the slower it moves. So if you're noticing as you're going through the field that you know you're shooting for 100 gallons, it's at 80, 
it jumps to 125, drops back down to 80. It's just not stopping in the middle. It's because it's it's trying to find that 100, but it's jumping up. To, it's going so fast, it's going to 120. Then it's going, oh, I got to get back to 100. It goes back to 80. Oh, I got to get up to 100. And then it goes back to 125. That's just too fast. So, you know, something like that, you probably want to drop it down to like a, you know, maybe, you know, most of them, I think we're running like around a 1.5. And that's going to make that nice and smooth. It's going to get right to that 100 and it's going to hold. And it's, it's going to, going to move a little and it, it, it's going to but it's going to keep that steady comp, uh, calibration and, and rate going for you as you go through the field um, another one that um, is a question we ask a lot uh, when we get calls if somebody has a new setup and there's an issue is that valve return to tank um, so if your control valve is on the opposite side of the tank excuse me is between the pump and the tank um you want to have that on obviously but if your control if your control valve is between the pump and your manifold you're going to want that off because what it's going to do is if it's between the pump and the tank we got to close to send more uh, spray out the back or open to to slow it where when we put it between the tank and the between the pump and the manifold, excuse me, um, it's the opposite. We want to open it up to add more flow. We want to close it to get less flow. So that's something to watch for if you if you see issues with that. Uh, that's uh, could be and what's going on. It's, it's a setting that's one way or the other, right? So uh, yeah, that's once it's set, you never worry about it again. But that's probably one of the most common items that we see incorrect and if it's incorrect it works exactly the opposite way it's supposed to so it will be a, a huge problem obviously out of the gate so it's uh you know of course it's an easy remedy you just flip it but uh, it's very it's it's one of the most uh uh one of the one of the items that causes the most issues out of the gate is just getting that set right So um, we have a few other um, items here. Of course, pressure setup. If you want to add a, uh, a, a pressure transducer to monitor pressure as you're driving through the field, we can do that. You just need a 12 volt uh, pressure transducer. We can get in here and set that up uh, and, and track and monitor that. Um, these sprayer measurements, these are just the offsets. So this is just saying, hey, Mike, my GPS antenna is at the front of my sprayer. It's 10 feet away from the back of my sprayer. And I want my mapping to show the back of the sprayer. So we would just set, you know, a 10 foot offset or whatever that is to show uh, a true GPS marking of where the back of the sprayer is. Otherwise, you're going to, it's going to look on some of your mapping like your guys aren't shutting off until they're, you know, 20 feet outside the field and they're not turning it on on the other end until they're 20 feet into the field. Well, they're, they're hitting it right, but your offset's off. So um, that's something uh, to pay attention to. Of course, you can name each ag otter, whatever it is you please. So unit numbers or whatever you want, you can name them here. Um, and that'll give each ag otter its own individual name. Um, and low flow setup, <clears throat> that's for people that are driving it extremely low low speeds this keeps the the valve from closing down on them and uh, stopping the flow uh it, it's gonna prevent that from happening while you're uh out spraying it maybe maybe you got you know somebody wants to run 1500 gallons per acre and they're running re really low rates we need something to keep that from happening But the time zone, that's uh, self-explanatory. Um, whatever time zone you're in, that's what it's going to be. Um, <clears throat> and that's pretty much it for the advanced page. Again, this page is kind of a one and done. Uh, once, once you're set up, you really don't need to get into it again much. Uh, once everything's working, it's, it's done. Um, you shouldn't have to get in here and, and mess with anything again. Uh, any questions on any of that we just ran through? 
I might make one comment just on the um, meter calibrations. I know a lot of times we get questions where people say, hey, I want to calibrate the, the meter. I want to come up with a more accurate number because we used to do a lot of that with turbine meters. Turbine meters get dinged. Um, they get out of, out of got the situation. They need to be, the number needs to be tweaked. You need to put a known amount in, in and read it and then uh, uh, make a percentage change on that number. We don't notice that at all with electromagnetic uh, meters. We've got, I, I don't, I don't know how many meters we got out in the field now, but certainly it's you know, over a thousand. We don't see any need to calibrate these things because there's because they're electromagnetic versus a, a physical device. We notice that people that try to calibrate these things, and we've been we've actually been out there early on. We used to try to calibrate them a bit, change the number, tweak the number. We find the error that we introduce. Um, based on our calibration is greater than what we see from these meters. So it's very unlikely. I, I you know, I never say never. So uh, I, so you can do that, but I, I think uh, pretty much uh, in most cases, you're gonna see that you're, you're creating more problems than you're fixing by, by adjusting that calibration number. Go with the number that's on the, the side of that meter. It's almost uh, foolproof for us. Trust your devices. They'll, they'll take care of you. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> the last page we have, so the four pages that we use is diagnostics. Now, this is a great page for um, a lot of things. And let me reset them so I can show you. Um, uh, once we get into that diagnostics page, and we'll probably, if you call in and, and, and are asking for help, are probably going to ask you to go to this page. Uh, uh, we're going to first off want to see, hey, is that bolt uh, sensor being detected? If you're saying you've got wheel wheel uh, sensor issues or speed issues, we're going to want to know if that it's hitting bolts. Every time that sensor goes by a bolt, it's it's hitting a a light. Not only not only here, but it's also hitting a light here on the um, on the ag otter itself that you can see and. And here, and if you don't see that, there's probably something wrong with that sensor. Um, and so that's a, a good way to go look at it is right in here. Um, again, I can also see my uh, uh, left flow and right flow. I can see my flow of meters, make sure they're working correctly. Um, I can double check my valve, my, my, my control valve while you're parked in the yard, see if it opens or closes, make sure it's working correctly. Uh, and then I can see all my... Uh, satellite to see if I've, I've actually got a connection and, and, and how well, uh, how clear, how good it is. Um, a big one though that um, I think is is probably once once most clients get an ag otter, they, they get a little addicted sometimes to this, is the simulate speed, which we'd love to see guys run. Um, when that's on, as it is now, that allows the user to um, take that sprayer, park it, in their yard, fill it full of water so it's nice and safe. Get that sprayer revved up to either you know the, the RPMs, get the PTO running on it to the, to the correct RPMs that you'd be running in the field, and turn it on and run it right there, and just without driving and tell it you know look hey I want you to go 2.2 I want you to go 2.5 whatever that speed is that I want it set at and see how it works see make sure that a do 500 gallons well you know is this too fast to do 500 gallons do we need to slow down do we you know whatever that is you can play with all that right here and, and just make sure that that sprayer is set up correctly before you leave to get out to the field um, and, and face those issues there or maybe it comes back from the field with an issue like the left side's off by 30 gallons um, you can run it, you can stop it, put some water in it, run it, see what's going on without having to chase it down a row and try to figure out what's going on. You can just park it right there, turn it on, take a look, see what the issue is without running down a row and, and chasing it. So that's a powerful uh, tool that you know we encourage you to work with because you will be surprised at how much you'll learn about your sprayer 
by just running that and um you're gonna see so much and, and learn so much about it that uh i think a lot of people find that interesting and uh and spend a lot of time on that and especially beginning of the year i don't know i know there's a lot of guys on here that have been running it and used it um, i'm sure they can attest to that is setting that up and making sure it's right before you even get started it, it saves so much time and energy come season uh, that's that's it um i think we've hit all the pages any questions on the app Does anybody have any questions while we're here um or we'll just move on to ag hippo live oh one thing i just thought before so if we are going to be running ag hippo live two things one you need to have cellular connection either with att verizon your choice um and two you'll see that little track it cloud i've got right there right now you're just going to get your login from us and you're going to put that in here um log in and that's going to automatically start moving that data up to the cloud for you so that's how we move that data back up to uh ag hippo live and it's just sending this data right off of here now there is a way to move that data manually uh remove it from the ag otter itself um and and, and put it into ag hippo uh, online manually and that would be coming to this page so what i hit was uh the, the no job up here and then logs up in the corner and I can see I've got a couple of logs on here and some other things going on. And these can then quickly be used to, uh, one, it's a quick way to look at the information that was already on there. Uh, and two, be able to send it off to, uh, to use to yourself, to use in a live. And all you have to do is click on that, uh, job, go ahead and, uh, hit email and now I can just email this off to myself and I'll have that at my desk when I get back to the office and be able to load it up and look at that job. But it also, once you've got it loaded in, I mean, just right now, it's telling you some information about the jobs you did. You can see right here, I've got a target rate of hundred gallons. He actually ran 99.9 .9 gallons and his left and right there. I can see his 101 on the right, 98 on the left. Uh, I'd be happy with that. I, I, I'd just move on and, and say everything was good. But if you're not, you can also come in here and just real quickly say load map. We'll give it a second and it'll give you a quick view on your iPad or your phone of what happened. So now I can look at that job real quickly. Uh, I can see what was going on. I can see, look, there's a skip there, uh, you know, a little miss where probably he had to do a refill. You know, he's got something going on here. I don't know. But um, that's a quick way as well to look at that. All right. So once we are hooked up and we have that all going up, uh, to the cloud our next step now is to uh, load and go in, back to your desk and we can do this see ag hippo live as soon as i can get this screen up we'll be doing great all right so so this is a uh <clears throat> actual uh, client's account. I, I've gained permission to to show some of it, and, and uh, I appreciate that very much. And um, I'm not going to name names, but you know who you are, and I appreciate it. Um, they're not actually running today due to high winds, um, but you can actually see where they where they left their sprayers last night. Um, I can see the the work they've done here. Um, if I zoom out, I can see you know each ag otter what it's done. Um, each color is a separate ag otter that was sending data. 
um, and it relates to you can see the icons for each I got her to where they ran, what they did. Um, and then down below, I'm just getting some feedback on what each of those did as well. So if it was running live right now, we would see last location reporting. Uh, but I can see that, look, hey, 1702 did 23 acres. Uh, he, he ran a total of 4,000 gallons, you know, and his average speed over the job was three miles an hour. And here's his average, you know, right and left, and it was 175, which they were shooting for 175. So that's great. And as a manager, what I'm looking for, I just want to go in here and see good, 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 good. If that's good, I'm good. Uh, these alerts here are based on those alerts we talked about in the iPad. So if you've set those at 10%, 10% in between, you know, one to four miles an hour, that's how we're going to rate them here for you to look at. So when you get that uh, and go look at live, I mean, that you can look at that and just say, hey, they're, they're within all the parameters I set for them. Everything's good. Um, you know, no need to really dive too far into anything. Although, if you want to, you can. And um, with that, um, we'll look at um, some historical data. Um, now, this can be uh, accessed right here. It's going to hit history. Uh, I can click on spray. And just for reference, that, that live data was everything that happened in the last 24 hours. So that's what you were looking at. Yeah, the sorry. The historical data is if you want to go look at something that's older than 24 hours. Yeah, so we're, we're actually going to go back. So I'm in history now. I'm going to go back in time um, to this weekend. Let's say Friday, Saturday. I'm going to apply that. I want to see how things went this weekend. So we give it a minute to load. Um, actually, I think I've got it up here. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump back into this. So here's this weekend's work. Um, I can see this was between uh, 8.40 in the morning to 8.40 in the morning between the 15th and the 16th. Um, so I can see everything that's going on. I can see my eye goders up here on the map. I can see where they're at. Um, I can scroll down, look at all their work. And again, I mean, everything looks good. I'd be really happy with that. Now, <clears throat> what we can do now is go up and we can look into this with more detail. I'm going to zoom in on this field. You're going to notice that just below the field here, there's going to be a, a, a button that pops up. There it is. I'm going to turn that on and then just for ease of use and look, I'm going to hit the uh, full screen. Let's give it a second. What it's doing right now is it's trying to bring in all of the um, application data that it recorded. Now, keep in mind, the Agotter records this data um, every second. So every dot you're about to see is a second of application. And um, in this case, everything's green because everything went well. Um, we have some yellow over here, but that's because he's running the outside of the, uh, the field. But if I scroll over any of these little data dots, I can see exactly what was happening at that time and understand more about what was going on. And in this case, you know, we're just seeing how great it was. It, it got 173 gallons of acres, you know, left and right, you know, within, within the parameters. And speed was good. Uh, there's also direction right below the speed there, which direction he was going. Um, and then, of course, date, time, and uh, what their swath was set at, lat long, everything for that part of the uh, job. Uh, it gives you more detail into what's going on. And you, you can see here, this is alerted because one side was turned off, but that's because they're spraying the edge of the field. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be 
showing one side low. Uh, but that's how we uh, record that. Um, I'm going to, I've got another field here I want to show you uh, that's actually got a little more information in it than these. And you can see some different colored dots here, uh, some things that are going on that just wasn't a, as good a spray job as that other one. Um, and this is the information that's being recorded live. So you can see if I zoom in here, one thing, and it's hard to see right now, the dots are kind of small, uh, but these red circles actually have a green circle around them. Uh, the inside of it, that, that's your alert for the spray. The outside of it, that's the speed. So green speed means good, he was good. Uh, red in the middle means he had a spray issue. Um, so in this case, he was high. Uh, uh, he had the left side was up to 115 and his right was down to 97. And then we can see here just what we call an over under where he was so far off on the left and right that we're, we're calling that out is look, you know, 114 on one side, he's 89 on the other. Um, he's way without his, way outside his parameters on both. And uh, that's going to alert you there as well. And although his speed has held up pretty well throughout this job, um, this particular job is probably not, you know, one of the best. It, it probably maybe we need to look at some of the yeah. things that happened here and, and understand what happened. And, and, and this is a good time to park that rig, put it on that speed, simulate speed and, and see what's going on. Or, I mean, it just it's pretty evident looking at this. You can see that left side is consistently high, right? So, looks like some plug nozzles on that right side, right? So, I see 120 on one side, 99 on the other. He's got some nozzles. Uh, he could have other plumbing issues, but left side's a problem. Right side's not. Could be a filter. Could be a filter, even. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, fundamentals are still there, right? I mean, we, we've got to take care of the equipment. We got to keep those things running. Is that left side? But, but yeah, it could be a number of things. But that's you know you got an issue. You know what the target. So it will tell you, and and as we say a lot, in uh, in uh, Greg and I joke about it quite a bit. Is you know. I got is just the messenger. Don't don't kill the messenger. We're just telling you what's going on. It's 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 a it's a it's a tool to show you what's going on out there, um, and, and uh, that's what we want to be. And uh, sometimes it's not always good news. Uh, so uh, we do we do our best to help you get that to only get good news, but it's not always that way. So, um, any questions on anything I just went over? Good time to speak up. Um, I know we're we're right over time right now. We've got a little bit to get through. Um, if you guys are okay with that, I'm gonna pull up the um, PowerPoint and let Greg finish this off. I think he where is my PowerPoint there? All right, close. Again, if you guys have any questions on the real time stuff, if, if you, um, you know, that it's not, as we mentioned a few times, it's not required that the system runs in real time, um, but all systems have the capability to run in real time. That's all based uh, through that uh, Apple product. Um, you know, some, some things that we've created uh, for going forward is we really want to leverage that cloud-based communication, right? So now, right now, we're just pushing our as-applied maps to the cloud. So um, we just do that automatically, of course, that's, you know, to, to put uh, less reliance on the driver, less reliance on the, you know, somebody going out there and retrieving the logs. We don't want to do all that because that's an extra step and it requires human intervention. We just turn it on real time, the data just goes back. Now, we work with groups like Aggregate and Conservice um, to enhance the product, right? Because both those companies work on uh, work order creation and uh, data analysis. 
So obviously pushing our data back to those um, back to those software platforms allows you to really create uh, uh, an analysis based on your spray job. So we've got Ag Hippo, which is very fundamental. You, you saw what we do. That uh, that's part of the, the, the product with uh, with Ag Otter. But we don't do a, a we don't do an extensive amount of analysis. We don't do a, a lot. We're just that piece where we send it back and we can look at it and you can go in there and analyze it. Where groups like Agri and Service take it to the next level where they're doing a, a you know considerable analysis. Now, one thing we will unveil this year with Conservice is actually the ability to push a work order down to Ag Otter. So we can go in their platform, create the work order, put all the data in, and Steve mentioned this, and now you can uh, assign that to an asset, and then it just appears on the Ag Otter. It'll come down and, and um, the Ag Otter has that uh, work order. So if I wanted to set up all my work orders in service, um, See, this is what I'm going to do for the day. These are the fields I'm going to do. These are the rates I'm going to do. Um, these are the products I'm going to spray. Now, all that data can come down in the Ag Otter, give the driver a list of, of uh, options. They choose from that list of, uh, of work orders and they just go about their business. You don't have to worry about them setting their rate or getting it wrong or getting the wrong field. All that will be in the Ag Otter. And then once the work starts, the spraying starts, of course, we push all that data up to, to Ag Hippo and all those as applied maps go back to conservers. So it's uh, bi-directional communication, right? So we've got the push and the pull. The, the data from the work order comes down and appears on the Ag Otter once it's uh, assigned, to a, uh, an ag, assigned to an asset, in this case, an Ag Otter. And when the as applied are done, they go back, uh, the data goes back up uh, for retrieval. So it can be you in real time, it can be analyzed, you can do whatever you want with it. So that part of this bi-directional communication is really where we're going to be pushing a lot of our uh, a lot of our efforts going forward is to uh, work more closely with these groups so we can again less button pushes for the for the drivers and, and for anybody and less human involvement so we can so we can automate this. Um, there's just a couple slides up here that Steve's got and just show you some of the uh, data in Agrian. Um, again, like I said, they they do a, a quite a bit more analysis on things than than uh, than we do, um, just simply because that's uh, that's what we use their tools for. Now we uh, we talk a little bit about the future. We'll talk a little bit about where we get, where we're intending to go, um, even with variable rate things like that. But uh, um, you want to just jump to that right now, Greg? Uh, yeah, well, let's just on these, just uh, maybe we can make a, a quick point here. And I guess we hit most of the, most of the, uh, most of those items just talking about um, what, what Ag Otter is, right? So we, just to recap on things, it's a superior to, to speed and pressure, right? That's the, that's the main function. We drive everything through an Apple device. We use our, our, uh, our patented technology that uses um, a speed sensor and inertial system along with, with GPS and GNSS just to give a, a better picture for under the canopy. And uh, that makes us unique. And of course, we're app centric. We're the only company that's app centric. Um, there's still not any other companies that drive everything through uh, an app. There's companies that use apps as, a, as, a, uh, as an add on. But nobody that drives everything through the app that uh, makes us unique in that regard. Um, but uh, yeah, just jumping on, uh, moving along, uh, we'll just touch on some of these other things. Um, the, the data movement we talked about—that's really where our um, where our efforts are going—is to make it more streamlined, to make it more effortless, and really to completely eliminate uh, the need for. Uh, the driver really to do anything except drive and that that's another benefit of what we're doing it really lends itself to uh, you know an autonomous world where we, we don't need drive because that's what we want to work towards as well is just making that everything happen automatically put the instructions on the system make the machine do what it's supposed to do 
get the feedback um, back to uh, back to a central location so it can be used. Um, so, you know, if you've got any questions or comments, uh, feel free to to uh, bring them up. And of course, you can contact us afterwards. And and uh, and, and uh, if you've got some specific things you want to bring up, certainly do that. Um, we did have a question on that uh, chat, Steve. Did you look at that? And it, I think we we may have answered this. We just got a question: uh, Is it uh, is there a potential use of ag outer in a large scale rock row crops using full sprayers and, and, and integral sprayers? Yes, of course it can be used for that. It's not just strictly for orchards. Um, it can be used for anything. In fact, we see ourselves stepping into that world as we bring things like variable rate across. The reason we don't now is because you know we just we're not. We're not really designed for those applications when it comes to things like variable rate. If it's just for spraying flat rate, yes, of course it can be used. We do have uh, we do have uh, uh, our systems in in platforms like that for strictly just for row crop. We do a lot of the the uh, coastal crops as well, um, and we're getting into the variable rate side too. And, and uh, we won't talk too much about that, but we're happy to have any conversation with you guys about variable rate as well. Um, but just uh, uh, stepping on from this, Steve, bring up that next slide um, to where we're going. So we talked about that bi-directional communication, doing more with that, bringing in uh, work orders, pushing as applied maps back, just to automate that. So there's no need uh, for for uh, for humans or no need for a, a human to actually do anything. It's just going to happen automatically. We're getting more into texting data alerts. So now we have the alerts and now we can even send them out. So if you had uh, a driver in the speed, for instance, a driver in the field, for instance, that was uh, going too fast and the speed was high for over a minute um, or their rate was low for over a minute, we can, we can turn those into text alerts. So, you know, you, you may not want to get those text alerts at three in the morning, but we can we can set that up so it comes back to a manager who is somewhere else, anywhere on, on earth, right? And it just comes up and says, hey, your, uh, your driver has been, uh, been going too fast or he's been off rate for the last three minutes and give you those alerts um, anywhere. So you can, you can attack them at the point they're happening. You don't have to learn about them the next day. You don't have to review the data. You don't have to go in and say, okay, you know what? Was everything okay yesterday? You'll get those alerts immediately. So you just um, can attack them. So you can pick up the phone and make a call and say, hey, you know, what, why do we have this situation? Um, and those are things that we'll be really developing uh, this year. Um, working more with Agrian uh, for the work order and, and uh, data going back and forth. Um, we, just, uh, we just are pushing this stuff out with Conservice. They were a group that was pretty, um, uh, they, were, they, were, they were pushing this kind of technology for their customer base. So they were very progressive. That's the reason we started working with them on this. Um, and we will do the same thing with Agrian to, uh, to get that data going back and forth so we can pull in work orders from Agrian and push data back. Um, of course, we're, we mentioned we're working with the harvest data. The same ag outer controller can be a different cable harness, but uh, it's the same controller can be used for um, for harvest. And that's another big push of ours is for dry application, for dry spreading. Um, we want to be involved in anything that has to do with inputs into the field and uh, data coming out of the field, like harvest. So we're spraying, we're spreading, and when we're, when we're collecting uh, uh, yield, we want to be involved with that. So that's part of what we will do going forward. Uh, we hope to have some uh, dry application um, uh, reading that's happen, happening in the field this year. So that'll be a push of ours. And then, of course, I mentioned variable rate application. The only reason we haven't gotten into variable rate is because we just don't have a lot of demand for it in our fields. Now, when we get into some of the more mainstream row crop and we get into the, the Midwest, we do have a, a need for that. And of course, in our we do have a, an aerial application system. We've got a crop dusting system called Ag Pilot X, where we're having to work with variable rate this year. Um, so you'll we'll move into that world 
because in that uh, aircraft world, in that crop dusting world, this is something that's uh, that's been needed, is needed for our current platform. So we're going to add railroad application for our crop dusting system, and then we'll bring that technology across to our to our ground products. You know, I have heard uh, a handful of customers tell us that they're very interested in, in doing some things with their rate application. We encourage you guys, if you do have certain um, uh, certain applications that you feel might apply to this, talk to us about it. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be bringing that into the field uh, this year in, in 2021. Um, so that pretty much sets the pace for what we're trying to get done this year and going forward. Um, any feedback on that from you guys? Any comments or questions or, or anything that you have uh, specifically for us? Greg, I have just one question. Um, currently, we have an ag otter that it's for an orchard sprayer that only has one meter on it. Um, we have another sprayer coming this year that I'm hopeful will have two. Can it be upgraded to have two? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. The, the only, the only. So you just need another meter. Now, typically, what we do is that cable harness. The cable harness for the meter uh, typically has two connectors: one for right, one for left. Now there are some singular cables, um, but typically when we send one out, we send the dual meter cable. Just simply because we find that most people, when they run one meter, they wake up one morning and say, wow, why don't I run two meters? It's just better. It costs a little bit, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, big deal. If I can see left versus right, that's a, that's a much more powerful uh, uh, data uh, package that I can get. So just check your, your meter cable to see if you've already got the dual meter cable. So, yep, just get a get an identical meter that you've got, and you'll have two meters. And just be sure you got the right cable. Your cable that you've got has probably got the connector for that other side. If it doesn't, you just need to replace that short cable. It doesn't doesn't cost much to do that either. So, absolutely, you can do that. Um, just get the second meter, and then you'll just make a change in the controller to tell it's two meters instead of one, and you're done. Okay, thank you. If you get any questions on how to get that done or need pictures or anything, uh, let us know. Just shoot me an email. We'll, we'll, we'll help you out best we can. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, another thing I'd like to hear too from you guys, if you've got it, is things you'd like to see too. Um, it, it, you know, you don't have to bring them up here now, but feel free to email me. We want to do some more of these webinars and we don't want them all to be the same. So if there's something you want to drill into more, let us know so that we can uh, plan to set that up. I'd appreciate we that. One, we have one more question that came across through chat. Um, just what yeah. technology do we need to send stray data uh, to the cloud in real time? Um, really, that's just about the Apple product. So as long as the Apple product is connected, that's it. So um, now a lot of the early iPads that we sent out um, were, were Wi-Fi only. They weren't, they didn't have cell modems in them. So you need a, you need a, 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 a Apple product with a cell modem. So it's just connected to the cloud. Um, now every uh, iPad that we've been sending out for at least the last year, I'd have to look at when, when we've been doing it, probably the last two years, has a cell modem in it. So that cell modem just needs to be activated. Um, and I, I do notice our question is coming out of Brazil um, uh, from Milton. You know, so if we want to run that in Brazil, um, you just need to talk to the local providers, make sure that uh, uh, iPad that you've got has got the proper chip. And, and Apple typically just uh, replaces that chip if it's not the one that's, uh, that's for the, the current suppliers. But most iPads that go out can be turned on to any provider. We don't, uh, they, they stopped making them unique. They used to make it where if you had Verizon, you had to have a Verizon iPad. If you were, were T-Mobile, you need a T-Mobile iPad. They don't do that anymore. They send them out. They have the capability of turning on to any provider. So you can just 
uh, turn it on, um, call your local provider if you want to use AT&T, T-Mobile, um, or, or Verizon. In Brazil, you've got your providers the same way. Um, there is an outside chance. There are some services that do require that Apple product to come back and they flip out the, uh, uh, the, uh, the chip that's in there um, to talk to the, the cell provider. But that's uh, usually, I've never heard it not being free of charge. Um, Apple promotes that. They, they support it. Um, Apple knows we send units all over the world and um, they don't have any problem with that. They can go anywhere and get their chips uh, uh, replaced if they need that. Or more likely, just talk to your local provider and they, they get the, uh, the data from the iPad and they turn it on and you're connected. If you've got existing data platforms, of course, just add it to your platform. Well, you know, we, we don't really sell the, the, uh, the data plans. We could be a middleman for that, but we don't get into that because it's, it just, it would cost the customers too much. Whereas most customers can just take an iPad that they get, they've got an existing plan with someone, call them and turn it on your existing plan. It's going to be much cheaper than having us sell you a data package. And uh, a lot of times it's free. They just, you add an iPad to your existing um, service provider. And because you don't use a lot of data, it, you're on a data plan. So you can add as many devices as you want based on uh, that data coming across. And there's not a lot of data. You can think of, uh, think about a, a job, a, a job that you would do every day takes up about two megs. Um, not a lot of data. Um, so, I mean, even if you're running, you know, seven days a week, you're talking about 14 megs a week. It's just not a lot. Um, so, uh, um, you can get that turned on to your, to your own data platforms. And of course, that's what we encourage. Um, and if you guys want any more details on that or, or have further comments on it, certainly contact us. We're happy to talk more in depth about those. If there's nothing else, Steve, we'll turn it back over to you. Any other questions? All right. Well, um, and, and I guess that's uh, it. Um, Steve, you'll, feel free to contact us. Steve, I think you'll be able Sorry? to find a, a link of the. I, I think this will be recorded, and we'll be able to spy out yeah. a link to anybody that, that wants to reference it. I'll I'll send it out to everybody that was invited and got to this. I'll uh, as soon as I get the uh, the link back to it, I'll get that out to you guys. And uh, if you guys have any questions, our emails are right here on the screen. My phone number is there. Give me a call. Um, always available. And uh, thank you for coming and, and spending the time with us. Sorry we went over, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get this squared away. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks,